Okay, so this is the last of the series, and I'm going to be talking about this time a, uh, a photodiode, and we have an infrared photodiode here. And what I want to point out is that they, we have a couple of different kinds of them, but this is the most common one and the one people use mostly. It's dark, so it doesn't allow visible light in, it, uh, but it is sensitive to infrared light. Now you can see that there are two characteristics that tell you how to mount this. Uh, one of them is this chamfer or bevel on this upper, um, I'm going to move it a little closer so you can see that. You can see that bevel there in this corner. That indicates that that is the cathode side or the negative side. The other uh, possibility is to look at the difference between the links of the leads and the, um, as we said before on, uh, on diodes, LEDs and photodiodes, the uh, longer lead is the plus lead or the anode. Uh, unfortunately, some of the uh, ones that we've gotten in the later shipment, uh, the leads are equal length, so you have to depend on looking at the bevel on this. And the surface that is sensitive is this surface, so you're looking, so you want to have that bevel in the upper right corner, and you play your R IR LED into this surface here. So that's basically how this works. Now what I want to do is show you um, uh, what we have here. What we have is a standard diode curve. Um, where uh, if when the voltage goes in the negative direction you get no current and when it goes in the positive direction you get a fair amount of current with a pretty high slope meaning that it's very low resistance once you get past the initial six tenths of a volt or something like that. So uh, you remember what we said in uh, 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 lecture is that uh, when you illuminate a photodiode the entire curve drops and when you do that, you get current in the negative direction through the uh, diode, through the uh, photodiode. Um, and uh, it's not a large amount of current, but it acts like a current source. So it doesn't really care uh, how much resistance, we know within limits, it doesn't care how much uh, resistance it's trying to, it want, you want to shove that current through. So even though there isn't much, you can put like a 100K resistor in there, and you can get a very fair amount of voltage that can be sensed. So this is basically what it looks like. Now here is, uh, this is a, um, an infrared uh, LED. Note that it is not the dark green clear uh, uh, LED. It is colorless and clear. And not to be mistaken with some of the other colorless clear ones that we have that generate uh, visible white light, most of what we have are this, uh, if they are colorless and clear like this, they're infrared. Uh, they might get mixed up because you can't tell just by looking at them which is which. So anyway, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to show you when I illuminate this that we get some current change, right? So, we, so now you can see that current actually happening in the third quadrant, negative current, and, uh, you, and it is fairly sensitive. You can, you can uh, if you aim it right, now you, you have to aim it right to get a fair amount of current there. But as you back away, you may have to make it a little more sensitive, uh, get down into this kind of range here, and now you can still see, if you put a big enough resistor in there, you can still get some, a fair amount of current. So um, this is usually the preferred way. Of course, the beauty of it is that uh, it's unaffected by the ambient visible light. Um, uh, the problem is that if you don't get what you expect to get, uh, then um, uh, you can't tell is it, the, uh, is it the LED that is not emitting or is it the photodiode that is not responding. So you can put it into the curve tracer here and um, tell. You know, if you get the standard diode curve, then um, uh, you're pretty confident that the uh, diode is all right.